what if x, right, was um, 0 0.02 repeating? Well, here, now, because the, the 2 is repeating only, that is different, by the way, we'll, we'll show this as well, as 0 0.02 repeating, these are not equal to each other, right? If we think about this on the right, we have x equals 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.02, and so forth, because the 0 and, and the 2 are repeating. But on the left here, x is going to be equal to 0 0.022222, right? So these are clearly not the same thing, so how do we deal with them? Well, on the right here, with 0 0.02 repeating, we would set x equal to 0 0.02, our decimal, and multiply by 100, as we've been doing, right? So here, we are decimal twice to the right, and we get 2.02 repeating. And our proof is basically the same as before, 100x minus x equals 2.02 repeating minus 0 0.02 repeating. In algebra, 100x minus x is 99 groups of x. And over here, take away the 0.02 repeating from 2.02 repeating and just get 2. We finish by dividing by 99, right? And then we get our fraction, x equals 2 over 99, right? Okay, so those are equal. But what will happen here in this, in this more interesting example? What do we want to multiply by? Well, here, right, our, our, our pattern begins in the hundredths place. Um, so, so there are ways to deal with this in terms of breaking it apart. We can think of this as um, 10 times smaller than 0.2 repeating. So, for example, if y equals 0 point, excuse me, 0 0.2 repeating, and we know that gives us 2 ninths, then I know x, which equals 0 0.02 repeating, that's just 10 times smaller. This decimal has moved over one place and made it 10 times smaller. We give us 2, so give us two over 90, which is 10 times smaller than 2 ninths. And that's the appropriate, appropriate fraction. But how do we prove this uh, with this, this algebraic approach? Well, here what I would do is I would say let x equal our decimal as we've been doing, 0 0.02 repeating. And here I would find 100x, right? And 100x is what? Well, it would be 2, and then you have 0 0.02 repeating after that, or do we, right? Think about this for a moment. What just happened? That's not actually true, right? This is where things change now. If we look at, um, let me rewrite the, this decimal right here. This is 0 0.02. 2, 2, 2, 2, and so forth, right? So so here, when you multiply by 100, your decimal was twice to the right. So think about this carefully, 100x would then equal 2 point, see it was once, twice, and then 2 repeating. So here we can't just subtract x from it. If you subtract 0 0.02 repeating, it won't cancel out with this 0 0.2 repeating. So what we need to then do is find 10x. And 10x equals what? move once to the right, and 10x equals 0 0.2, repeating. So this is a little bit trickier because you need to plan out what you multiply by so that the proof will actually cancel out the terms, the, de the repeating decimal portion, and then work. So here we have 100x's minus x, and that equals 2.2 repeating minus 0 0.2 repeating. So see, I, I knew I had a 0.2 repeating here. So strategically, I need to then pick a second term that when I subtract it, will cancel out the 0.2 repeating. So I found that by multiplying this by 10. So here, 100x minus x is, excuse me, minus 10x, right? We found 10x here. So 100x is minus 10x, is that's 90x. And 2.2 repeating, minus 0.2 repeating is just 2. Solve for x by dividing by 90. And then we there we have it, x equals... 2 over 90. And that's, that's, I think, as complicated of an example, uh, or, or at least, you know, I should say that starts to get into the, the interesting world of complex examples with these proofs. All right, thanks a lot.